Hi friends, my name is Daddy Ken A. Bittere. I bring you greetings in the name of the resurrected Christ. I'm excited I could do this broadcast. To whoever that is under the sound of my voice, wherever you are, you follow me on social media, I'm privileged to pass to you. Wherever you are, I want you to, at least at the end of this broadcast, share it to someone to listen because a question was dropped on my email box. Last week, last time I was on this broadcast and I began to talk about, you know, when a question was thrown, does God tempt people with evil? And I said, no, he said the character of God is good. Now, I have another question before me that was asking, what's the advantage over the unbeliever? What's the advantage of the believer over the unbeliever? Now, that question is a product of two things. Number one, he said that the person is not mature. Number two, the person is suffering from identity crisis. When you don't know who you are, you begin to think of how to compete with someone, and you begin to feel that somebody is better than you. Now, listen to me. Nobody is better than you. Everybody is unique in their own way. That's why when God created everybody, he didn't create every, even the people that came as twins. They have resemblance, but they have differences. Their character traits, everything can be the same because nobody is, nobody is created to be like somebody. Everybody is unique in their own way. Unique in their own way. And if you don't understand who God is, you can never know who you are. If you don't understand who God is, you can never know who you are because your identity is fine in who creates you. The creator of the product understood the product. There is no other product can begin to redefine himself when he doesn't know who produced him. So the first point is that you must understand your producer and the maker thereof for everyone is God. You know, people don't understand because when you don't know who God is, you will suffer from identity crisis because your reality is in who Christ is. Christ came to show you your reality. And if you begin to walk in that perspective, you begin to know that you are not here to compete with anybody. The purpose of competition is because of, I know, I want to achieve this. I want to buy a car. There's nothing wrong with a car. I want to build an empire. There's nothing wrong with those things. But see, you're not called to buy a car. You're called to fulfill destiny. You're not called to have to accumulate money. You are called to fulfill destiny. I've seen people with all the money. They are restless. They are helpless. They are not happy. Because in my research, I've realized money is good, but money is not the source of joy. Joy comes from God alone. Because joy is a product of the spirit. What money does, it gives you happiness. And they are temporary. They are temporary. You know, God even gives you something to think about as a believer. In the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse number 6. Let me just read that so that we begin to look into some scriptures. In this. He said, look at what he said. He said, be careful for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. He said that the, that the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Did you see? Every believer is projected to express Christ. The peace of God will keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Then in verse 82, Why finally, my brethren, what things soever are true, what things soever are honest, what things soever are just, what things soever are pure, what things soever are lovely, what things soever are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, he said, think on these things. Is it? God is wise. He gives you things to think about. When you begin to think about, oh, man, my friend, we graduated together and he has achieved and I have not seen anything. Oh, me and that pastor, we started together and his ministry has, has grown and I have not done that. You see, we are not called to compete. We are called to complement one another. And if you have friends that is making you compete, quit them because they will soon destroy you. You need people that will help to complement what you do. These are the kind of people you need. And the scripture will point you to those kind of people. The scripture show us our image. You see, the, 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 the express image of the believer is Christ. You can't know you until you find Christ. Christ is the reason why we live. The Bible says in him we move and live and have our being. I don't know who you are listening to the sound of my voice. Sometimes this thing is a product of families or friends. They are putting you under unnecessary pressure. Oh, you're not yet married, you're 35. Oh, you're not yet achieved anything, you've not have a car yet. Car is not an achievement. Car is not. You need to learn to fulfill the purpose and the very essence why God called you. Bible says God spoke to Jeremiah. He said, before you were formed, I knew you. 
before you were formed, I knew you. I knew you. So God knows better who you are. Your friends can't tell you. Your, your, in fact, your parents that give birth to you cannot define you. Your definition is found in Christ. He said the things that are true, these are the things to think about. And when you think about those things, it puts you on a good lane. You, your life begins begin to go through process. You take life through and steady. It's, you know, the Bible calls it from glory to glory. What, where you are today will not be where you'll be tomorrow. Where you are tomorrow is not be where you'll be the, the next year. God wants your life to make progress. But the moment you introduce the spirit of competition, you will destroy yourself before you arrive. You're going through a lot of depression. You're going through a lot of crisis around your life. You know, family, friends has put you under unnecessary pressure. You've lost the place of even, you know, uh, interest in life, interest in the things of God. You're just there. Now listen to me. God sent me to you. It doesn't matter who you are, where you, who you are, you are the best thing that has happened to this world. Your friends are not the best. You are. Your family can't make you see that. Christ is. And God is interested in everything you do than you. And I want you to know God is in partnership with you today. He wants to make the best out of your life. I trust that the blessings of God and the hand of God is resting on someone right now under the sound of my voice. Wherever you are, whatever you are going through, whatsoever you are going through, God is bringing you out. You are free from that depression. You are free from that. It's a spirit. The competition is a spirit. That is called the spirit of competition. It's a spirit. Wherever it is, I chase him out of your life. You are out of, you are, it's out of you. Listen to me. God wants to do life with you. Why not give him the opportunity and let God do life with you? You know, in God doing life with you, you are just relaxed and God is the one driving the vehicle. And I trust that in this season, even before the year runs up, you will find this internal peace and internal rest that will begin to bring you to the place of peace and calmness and you are achieving life and going through fulfillment from glory to glory. I pray for you. The plan of the enemy will not come to pass in your life. The purpose of the enemy is aborted already. God's grace is finding expression in your life. God's dealings, God's bidding is coming to pass for you. I pray for someone under the sound of my voice. I'm seeing you right now. Your greatest challenge are the company of friends you've kept. I pray that God will separate you from wrong friends, wrong relationship, and God will keep your heart in perfect peace and give you a relationship that will help you fulfill God's purpose and God's destiny for your life. And I pray for someone. You won't die. You will fulfill the reason and the very essence why you were born. May God bless you. May God preserve you and do with your life what man cannot do. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share this word with you. And I trust that by the time I'll be here back again, some of us, my email, they know the, the, the address and phone number and email to, to email to send any question is, you know, on the screen. You can be able to send me an email Ask questions. Instead of dying in silence, talk about it. And we could be able to come out to be able to answer. And I believe our God has helped me to be able to, you know, talk to that brother or that sister that could send that email, you know, that question about it. I want you to know that God has the best for you. But till I come your way again, bye-bye. Amen.